For problem 40, the area of the region in the first quadrant between the graph of y equals x times the square root of 4 minus x squared and the x-axis is what? So to answer this question, let's first get a better idea of what the graph of this equation looks like. So using our calculator, if I pull up the TI-84 emulator, we can go to the y equals function and then type in our equation into this first input. And then going to the window, we know we're just interested in the first quadrant. So we can set an x min of zero and hopefully this will be an appropriate x maximum value. And then drawing our graph, you can see that it goes from a value of x equals zero to what looks like x equals two. Though we can check this by tracing our graph. And what you can see is that when x is bigger than two, the function is undefined since if you put in values bigger than two, you'll essentially end up with the square root of a negative number, or in other words, you'll have imaginary numbers. But it also looks like this function is defined for an x value of two, since if I plug in x equals two, you can see that y is equal to zero. So we're essentially interested in the area underneath this curve from an x value of zero to an x value of two. And we can actually find that by just taking the integral of this equation from x equals zero to x equals two of x times the square root of four minus x squared dx. And what you can notice is that underneath the square root, it's a little bit complicated. So let's see if we can just do a simple u substitution so that u is equal to four minus x squared and du would be equal to the derivative of this, which would be minus 2x, and then we have dx. And notice that we have x dx in this integral. So if we solve for that, then we can make a direct substitution. So dividing each side by negative two, we have x dx is equal to du over minus two. And rewriting this integral, we'll have to change the bounds. So when x is equal to zero, we can plug that in here and figure out what u would equal. And for x equals zero, u would just be four. And when we plug in the upper bound for x, we get four minus two squared, or four minus four, which is zero. So then rewriting this integral in terms of u, we have the square root of this four minus x squared, which we replace with u. So we have the square root of u multiplied by x dx, but that's just du over minus two. And we can further simplify this by just factoring out the minus one half. And then we have the integral from four to zero of u to the one half du. And I rewrote it like this because it's gonna be easier to find an antiderivative without this square root notation. Now, one further simplification we can do is that when you wanna switch the upper and lower bounds, you can rewrite the integral from zero to four, where four is now the upper bound, but it would just be the negative of that integral. So essentially, we rewrite this as one half the integral from zero to four of u to the one half du since when flipping these bounds, we ended up with a negative, but that negative canceled with the minus from the one half. And this integral, we can actually find an antiderivative for. So the one half just carries along, and then we have the antiderivative of u to the one half. We just increase the exponent by one and then divide by that new exponent. And we evaluate this between zero and four. And then simplifying this fraction in the denominator, we can essentially flip it and move it to the numerator. And then this two would cancel out with this two here. So we just have one third u to the three halves evaluated between zero and four. And at this point, we just have to plug in those two bounds. So when we do that, if we plug in zero, it's just equal to zero. So all we have to worry about is when we plug in four, so we have one third times four to the three halves. And essentially four to the three halves 
means that we have to cube it and then take its square root. Or you could do it the reverse. You can take its square root first and then cube it. But regardless, if you square root it first, you get two and then cubing it, you get eight. So we have this integral is equal to eight thirds. So to answer the question that we started with, the area of the region in the first quadrant between this function and the x-axis is 8 thirds.